I was probably 40 minutes into filming this recent reads video when I looked down and realized I hadn't been recording a single second. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm here to tell you about all of the books that I read in April that have not been featured in another video and I should be able to do it really well and efficiently considering I'm repeating everything that I just said to dead air. You know, you just sometimes you just you have those days. I, I didn't have an incredibly successful reading month in the month of April. If you've been watching the channel then you know that I did have my first official DNF of 2019 in April. That was Nosferatu by Joe Hill. What you don't know is shortly thereafter, I had my second DNF of 2019, and that book was called The Dead X by Jane Corey. The Dead X is a 2019 release, and it's the story of Vicki, who is an aromatherapist. One day, the police show up and inform her that her ex-husband has gone missing. And obviously, they think that she probably played a part in it. I did not get very far into this book before I just gave up and put it down and said, "I'm this is not for me. Just right off the bat, I wasn't enjoying the tone of this book or the voice of the main character. For the most part, uh, it was depressing. It was really depressing. The main character was like, oh, you know... I have this job that nobody understands aromatherapy. I don't have a husband. I live all alone in a really small place that I rent. And I have epilepsy, which again, nobody understands. And I'm just not sure how good I could really expect my life to be. I prefer my protagonists or my main characters to have a little bit more spunk than that. The other problem that I had with the dead ex uh, is that Vicky suffers from epilepsy, like I mentioned. And the author chose to portray that affliction by implying that the character is really discriminated against because of it. And this takes place in the UK. I certainly have never been. I don't know how the UK treats people with epilepsy, but the, the author kept, you know, in, in the main character's mind, like I said, she was discriminated against, but people incorrectly thought that she was insane. Like she would have fits, like her seizures were fits of insanity and they would shy away from her as if they could catch it. And Nobody wanted anything to do with her. And she's like this outcast because she's got epilepsy. Now, wait a second. Ask your friends in the United States. Like ep epilepsy is a disorder, an illness uh, where the victims are subject to seizures. I mean, it's not, I'm, I, I'm not going to say it's not that big of a deal. It's actually life threatening, but you know, it's certainly not the individual's fault. We don't look at people <laughs> with epilepsy and think, God, stay away from me. I have an illness that is or can be disabling. I've never, ever experienced discrimination. I've never even experienced a level of sympathy that made me feel bad. Like people don't treat me like I'm pathetic. People don't treat me like I'm incapable. In fact, you know, there's this implication that those of us surviving with certain conditions like we're warriors man we are warriors and illness be damned we are living our lives and look at everything that I can do I mean I just it just found it really odd and unlike my own experiences and so I just wasn't feeling it at all so that's the dead x by Jane Corey Another book that I read that I was not a fan of, I gave this book two and a half stars, and that's the book Undertow by Alessandra Tori. This author is the woman behind the Girl in 6E series. She wrote those books under the name A.R. Tori, but all of her erotic romance are written under Alessandra Tori. 
And that's what The Undertow is. It's an erotic romance, and it's an actual re-release of a previously written book that she claims wasn't changed, just re-released under a different title. It is the story of a woman named Madison, and Madison lives with her boyfriend, Paul, and spends a couple of nights a week with her lover, Stuart. Now, Paul and Stuart are both aware that they are not the only man in Madison's life, but the two don't know anything about each other. She makes it a point to keep them separate. She lives with Paul in a very domesticated sort of relationship. Stuart is this rich businessman who puts work above everything else, and maybe Madison and Stuart would have been together if his first priority was not his work. So there's love between Stuart and Madison and there's love between Madison and Paul. I feel like the plot sometimes suffers in order to, you know, push sex to the, to the front, to the forefront, but everything's going fine. They're making it work until Madison suffers an accident one day and ends up in the hospital. It's unclear if she's going to survive. Paul is with her and he feels obligated to let the other man in, in Madison's life know that she could die. And if he wants to say goodbye, he better get to the hospital and say goodbye. When that happens, or because of that, the unknown connection between Paul and Stuart rises to the surface. Paul and Stuart uh, know each other in a certain regard and um yeah now at that point that's when i really started to kind of the you know like i said the plot was kind of suffering a little bit in the first half of the book but in the second half of the book after this big reveal of how paul and stewart are are connected it should have made for some really <laughs> angsty drama which I not I I guess I was kind of in the mood for. Instead, it was all just very folded up neatly and oh, well, okay. Then I guess we should proceed this way. Uh nobody screamed at each other. Nobody threw anything at each other. Nobody cried and begged. I was like, "Come on, somebody like get excited about this. This is life changing. You were in a really unconventional situation before. That situation has blown up in your face. Now let's see some fallout." And there just wasn't. It was all just very meh, whatever. And then resolving into a really unrealistic ending considering the the lines you know between these three people so that was the undertow by alessandra tori again i gave that one two and a half stars i still believe in this woman's writing first of all erotic romance is kind of tricky right <laughs> you either are uh in it for the angst or you're in it for the sex and you you know you have to sort of expect that maybe it's not going to be a groundbreaking plot I think there can be really smart erotic romances written, but I think the majority of them are not. I think the majority of them focus on things other than plot and story development. I read the book Play It Safe by my favorite romance author, Kristen Ashley, who I bring up incessantly. But uh, this book was released... God, I don't know, four or five years ago. And I had never read it because I knew I wasn't going to like it. <laughs> All right, that's not entirely true. I thought I might like it, but I knew that it was not my kind of book. Play It Safe is all about the cowboy. And I don't like cowboy romance, rancher cowboy romance novels. I just don't find mucking horse stalls to be particularly romantic. But Play It Safe is the story of Grace and Cody legend in the town of Mustang for capturing, breaking, and breeding Mustang horses. And then one day, a brother-sister duo comes to town. They're con artists. They're cheating people out of money. Everybody in the town of Mustang sees 
these siblings coming from a mile away. Like, they're not going to get one over on anybody. But Grace and Cody takes a liking to Ivy. And so they sort of have this whirlwind early 20s romance. And, you know, Ivy's rethinking the life that she's built with her brother and wants to maybe stay in the town of Mustang. And the brother's not having it. So he fabricates this deceptive scheme to get Ivy away from Mustang. Seven years pass. Grayson thinks that Ivy left him. Ivy thinks that Grayson moved on without waiting for her. There's this huge misunderstanding. That's what a second chance romance is all about. And someone in the town of Mustang calls Ivy and says that Gray is about to lose everything, his ranch, his horses, his home. She's got money now. Can she help? Conflict and drama and all of that ensue. Like I said, this was an okay book. There was nothing surprising in this book. It was written like Chris and Ashley novels are written. And if it had content that was my cup of tea, I probably would have loved it. In fact, this book has like a 4.27 average star rating on Goodreads. Fans of Chris and Ashley are also supporting this book. Chris and Ashley is the only author where I feel feel I put pressure on myself to rate her books highly, even if I don't necessarily like them or enjoy them. But at the end of the day, (laughs) I have to be honest with myself and with you guys. You know, there's some argument about whether they're well-written because she is a self-published romance author and she has a very, very stylized uh, way of writing. And Reading a Kristen Ashley book takes a long time to get used to. Do you look for literary prose in your novels or do you look for a sense of unique style that you can connect with? That's the big debate where Kristen Ashley is concerned. And so I can't say it was like well written because I don't know what your definition of well written might be, but it's written like all of Kristen Ashley's other books. So. I know it's not an issue with the writing. It's simply an issue with the content. There you go. I've rambled on about this long enough. Three stars. Boom. We're done. Okay, so I read um, the first Karen Slaughter book in the Grant County series called Blindsided. I liked that. I gave that four stars. That series follows the medical examiner slash pediatrician in Grant County. Her name is Sarah. And the sheriff of Grant County happens to be Sarah's ex-husband, Jeffrey. I I mean, there's other characters that the series is going to follow as well, but they're the major players in this particular book. Uh, Women are being raped and tortured and left for Sarah to find. Jeffrey and Sarah are trying to work together while still trying to avoid each other to uh, catch whoever is responsible for this. I I liked it. I expected to like it. I chose to read it because of my experience with Pretty Girls. And I found it similar. You know, Karen Slaughter is probably not going to be like an auto buy author for me. But I kind of have the feeling or I'm getting the feeling that if I want a tried and true, that I could pick up any Karen Slaughter book and read it and be okay. So far, there's a couple of things that that Karen Slaughter seems to do really well, and that is establishing realistic relationships between people, like what it means or what conversations between a mother and daughter sound like, or a sister and a sister sound like, or my goodness, a father and an ex-son-in-law, like those conversations. Uh, I really liked that in Pretty Girls, too, where these two estranged sisters have to sort of navigate their fragile relationship. I found it realistic. And likewise with Blindsided, it was one of my favorite parts of the book. She inserts humor masterfully into these grim and disturbing stories. And you need it. You need that break. The other crazy thing that I did in the month of April was I started the In Death series by J.D. Robb. This series is about 25 years old. J.D. Robb is also Nora Roberts. It's the series that features Eve Dallas, a detective, and her billionaire love interest, Rourke. The first book, Naked in Death, 
uh, introduces us to Eve Dallas and her futuristic world. There's a serial killer on the loose determined to kill six prostitutes. He leaves notes and videos for Eve Dallas in a way of taunting her. And she comes into contact with Rourke initially as a suspect. If I had read Naked and Death in 1995, it probably would have been phenomenal. But as it is, uh, we've become a little desensitized to things that probably packed a bit more of a punch in 1995. It's similar to, like the circumstances in the novel are similar to what you would find in a Karen Slaughter book. There's graphic detail. And there's usually uh, interpersonal angsty relationships as well. <laughs> the funny thing is, is that the books that I've read similar to the In Death series uh, probably draw on Naked in Death or the In Death series as inspiration. So I'm, I'm a, it's a little bit backwards. I'm, I'm working my way backwards. Lastly, another 2019 release. The book is Free Fall by Jessica Berry. This is the story of Allison, who is the sole survivor of a private plane crash. As soon as the plane crashes, Allison like gathers what she needs to survive in the wilderness and runs, makes a run for it because she believes uh, people are after her and that if they catch up to her, they will kill her. Uh, the crash takes place in the Colorado Rockies. So she's miles from civilization and she has to navigate the wilderness, the mountainous wilderness. Meanwhile, on the opposite side of the country in Maine is Allison's estranged mother, Maggie. Maggie is informed that her daughter died in a plane crash and like any good mother, absolutely refuses to accept it. <laughs> Maggie sets out to sort of solve or figure out the life and events that led to this plane crash. You know, she hasn't seen or spoken to her and I think it's two years. Every little tidbit of information comes as an absolute shock to Maggie because it's not the Allison that she knows or remembers. She's going to ask questions and she's going to put herself in a precarious situation in order to either come to a place of acceptance about her daughter's death or to prove to everyone else that her daughter is not dead like she believes. Um, this is a four star read. I think it's good. I think it's exciting. I love survival aspects in thrillers. So that was a big draw to this book for me. However, I cannot stand mother daughter stories. I don't know what the psychology is behind that. I'm afraid to know what the psychology is behind that, but that was the one aspect of this book that prevented it from being an anticipated read for me. My four star rating instead of like a five star rating might have something to do with that, but it also has to do with believability. This woman has sort of been groomed to be this trophy wife and she's thin and manicured and wears designer clothing and she was never a park ranger. And so the things that she manages to accomplish and get herself out of throughout her narrative is quite impressive and maybe a little bit unbelievable. Again, it's a decent enough read. It was exciting. I mean, there's a lot of layers to this story. So I think, you know, it's, it's well deserving of four stars. Absolutely. So check that one out if that sounds interesting to you, but that's it. I had one four star read in April. Holy crap. Yeah, this is bad. Let me know what your favorite book that you read in April was. Maybe I can read it and my May will look better than this. I don't know. Uh, if you've read any of the books that I mentioned, let me know your thoughts and opinions about them in the comment section down below. And if you have any additional questions about the books that I mentioned, uh, I will try to answer those as best I can. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, you guys. I will see you all very soon.